Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the rapid games that I played uh, three hours back now. Uh, it was a 10 minute uh, uh, rapid game and I started off with d4, open response with d5. Here I went with bishop to g5, open plays f6, trying to kick the bishop backwards, which helps me because here what my open does is plays g5, which is completely opening up this diagonal, which will be a weakness for the opponent later on. I put my bishop back on g3. My bishop is still pretty active. I can have h4. I can play e3. I can just give a check from h5 then. Lots of options available. Open plays h5 allows me to h play, play h4. And open pushes the pawn to g4 now. Here I play e3. Open plays knight to c6. And now I go with bishop d3, threatening to go with bishop to g6. Here my opponent plays e5 and I give a check from g6. Open moves the king up. I take the pawn. Open takes back with the pawn. And now I got my bishop backwards. Why? Because if I keep my bishop there itself, opponent has a chance of playing e4. And once e4 is placed, my bishop is kind of helpless. At, at max, if it has to come back, it will have to take, grab one of the pawns and then uh, end its journey in the game. So instead of that, I got my bishop back to d3, open plays a6, because now my opponent knew that my next move would be to place bishop to b5, so that I can trade off it for the knight. But So that's why, to prevent it, open plays a6 himself. I go with c3 now, because I knew that the pawn forward is coming, and then my bishop uh, will be going to e2, uh, which can be bad sometimes. So I want to keep an option of placing it on to c2 as well. Open plays pawn forward, and after giving it a thought, I thought maybe putting it on e2 is better. So I got it on e2. Open plays a bishop to g7, and here I go with bishop f4. The idea is to plant the bishop now onto g5. Open goes with knight at 6. I plant the bishop here onto g5. No, the queen is not going to go because open can place the bishop in between. That what that is what ha uh, what happens next. Now again, I thought. If my opponent takes here, I get to open the h file and I can then take on the pawn on h5 as well. So I didn't take here. I went with knight to d2. The idea is now to place the knight onto maybe b3 and then to d5, uh, d4. Opponent goes with king f7. Now is the time to take. So it's important to know when do you have to take or not. Because if I don't take it now, opponent takes with the bishop, I take back with the pawn. And in, in the next move, open takes with the queen. Uh, so open gets extra pawn. Yes, I will have the open, semi-open h file, but I cannot take the pawn really because the queen uh, is already defending it. So now you don't want to uh, go into that scene. So you take on the bishop. Open takes back with the queen. Here I play g3. Open goes with uh, rook to f8, trying to double up uh, an attack on to f2 eventually. So the next move will be to sidestep with the king somewhere. I went with queen to b3. My idea is to castle on the queen side and also take on the pawn on d5. Here open plays a strange move which was king to e6. I thought bishop was better here uh, defending this pawn. And then opponent can simply uh, connect both the rooks as well. Maybe triple up the attack on to f2. Uh, that could have been a strategy from the opponent side but opponent doesn't do that plays king to e6 instead, allows me to take the pawn on e4. That's a strange move, you can say, but open cannot take, and it's attacking the queen. So it's a nice move. Also, it's defending the pawn on f2. So there's nothing much open can do, has to move the queen. So now queen to f5, because of course, open wants to hang on to this beautiful file. And now I have to save the knight first, because it's attacked. I also have to ensure that my pawn doesn't go because the queen then enters my vicinity. So here I go with king to g5, giving a check first so that the king has to move. And now my knight is saved thanks to the pawn on h4. After the king moves, now I can castle. So I let the pawn go. I'm okay with that, but I have castled. Now opponent takes, which is a bad move again. Why so? Because if you didn't notice, uh, this d5 pawn is being attacked twice now because I castled. And that's what happens. I take it with the queen next. Open goes back with the king. And here I put my 
queen on e4, giving another check, open slide steps to f6. Now here in this position, I thought, what is the best move uh, or how to go about it? One of the thoughts was, maybe just put my knight on h3. If opponent takes, I can get the rook. I didn't. What I didn't see was that I can simply place the rook on the f1 and then queen is gone because uh, queen is pinned. So at best, opponent can take my rook. I can take back with the bishop and I win it easy from there. But since I didn't see that coming, I thought, okay, uh, let me do something uh, which I know for sure will work. That is, give a fork with the knight, take the rook, up and take back with the king. And now I thought, okay, do I want to get into a calculation again? Uh, or I can simplify this stuff because I'm ahead in the game. I'm plus three. Let's go for queen exchange. Open takes. I take back with the pawn. I have a pass pawn. I have the extra piece. It's a good position to be in. I have extra rook, so that's good, more than enough. Open place bishop to f5. I place my bishop to d3. Again, I, I can take here. Open can take back with the knight. And suddenly my pawn will be weak. That is one thing which I have to be taken care of. Open place rook to d8. But then I thought, okay, uh, after I take and we trade off everything, maybe I'll have the knight on to e3, which defends the pawn. That's what happens. Open takes back with the knight first, attacking the pawn. But here comes check. Open has to take. Takes with the knight. And now comes knight to uh, e2, defending the pawn on g3. Open place pawn forward. Here I bring the rook on the open file. King comes up to e7. I place my rook on to d5. Yet playing just solid. I want to grab one of the pawns after the knight is moved. And I'm happy with it. Knight goes back, so I have to take the C pawn. I take it. Uh, knight comes up, and I go with the knight, trying to exchange the knights. And if the opponent doesn't take this time, next move I can trade off. It will be a fork. And once the opponent takes with the knight, I can take back with the rook. Uh, so opponent comes up uh, onto d6. I get my rook onto g5, trying to attack the rook. Opponent takes the knight here. I take back, and now rook comes to e6, trying to take the pawn. I said, okay, take my pawn. I'll take yours. The exchanges happen. Here comes a, a check. I move. He takes the pawn. I take as well. And now I have two pawns here. I can proceed with one of them. Open gives the check. I'm sidestep. And now uh, this knight was irritating me. I pinned it first. Uh, open plays king to e6. I started pushing h pawn. Open comes up. And then I thought, okay, let me leave the pawn. I'll just go and grab the other two. Because I still end up having pawns and a rook, which is good enough for a knight. So I went into this game, which is a controlling end game from there on. Just try to attack the knight, push it backwards. Again, try to put your pieces in the diagonal, uh, uh, especially one square uh, difference. This way, the knight, if ha at all has to attack my piece, will have to move two to three times, which is bad because, yeah, lots of maneuvering will be required three moves and then only the opponent can attack my rook whichever way my uh, opponent wants to move it so it will take three moves for a knight to attack in the diagonal which is one step ahead so i just place my rook here also cutting off the king coming from here so i can now uh, push my pawns and that's what happens i thought of taking the uh, knight as well but then i thought okay let me push my king and dominate this end game and here comes the pawn forwards there comes a king a rook to h7, pushing the king to the last rank. Here comes pawn forward again. Opponent had no other choice. Uh, rook, the knight is not going anywhere here because it can be captured. Uh, and opponent has a chance. Opponent has to move the king. If king goes here, of course, I can place the rook also and take the knight and completely win it. So I took here and then again, trying to be more precise with checkmate. I went with rook to h7. It's a mate and next a move so open designs so it's important when to trade off and when not to trade off your pieces to gain little advantages and then it's very important to make the games simplified when you know that you will win it the thing is if you keep some of the pieces with your opponent there's always a chance of a comeback you just take that away by trading off everything that's required have the pawns and then win it easy I hope you enjoyed the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow with some interesting and instructive content like always.
थैंक्स फॉर टाइम टेक केयर बाय